it's okay to talk like this. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Valentin. Um, I play with computers for six, seven years. My first entry was with FreeBSD, which is a cool operating system. I have used along the way Debian and uh, CentOS in some project. And today I'm gonna present you, I'm gonna install together with you um, an Open Nebula cloud with CentOS. Has anybody of you heard of Open Nebula? Do you know? Okay. So what does Open Nebula do? <laughs> yeah, it's a cloud computing stack. I would call it the cloud controller because it controls the hosts and just spawns virtual machines wherever the schedule tells it to based on some rules. Uh, anybody else? Uh, okay, are you? I was like, I've started with Open Nebula for one and a half, two years, and I was looking for a solution for our company to um, virtualize and to be able to provide the users with a custom web interface because they don't really like the command line. And I have looked over OpenStack, CloudStack, and Open Nebula at that time. <coughs> And for me, OpenStack and CloudStack were like overkill to install. And I said, okay, OpenNebula, it's much, uh, much easier. And uh, I went with OpenNebula. Uh, the chief architect of this project, Ruben S. Montero, said that OpenNebula is the re realization of a vision of simplicity, openness, uh, code correctness, and a sysadmin-centric approach. Uh, I am definitely sure that the thing that brought me to Open Nebula was the system admin centric approach because it's easy, as you will see, after 45 minutes or 50 minutes, we are going to install a uh, pre machine cloud with Open Nebula on top of CentOS, and you'll see how easy it is to install it and afterwards to use it. <coughs> are you guys familiar with the hype, the cloud? Do you know like what the cloud is, what cloud computing it's all about? Everybody? Yeah, can you tell me? Can you, like, please take the mic so the guys from online can see us? Uh, I guess so I look funny with this, right? Um, you are referring to infrastructure as a service because I'm there are multiple, to multiple. That cloud computing provides nowadays. Okay. So, um, cloud computing is a way to provide to customers virtual resources. Yep. And they can uh, manage them with a self service portal. Uh, they can um, monitor their resource usage and they can uh, pay for the service in advance or after usage. Okay, cool. So you've just uh, listed the essential characteristic that the guys from NIST uh, gave a definition for cloud computing. Uh, the service models, I guess as you, many of you already know, there are three types of service models and others are arising now because of the networking as a service paradigm that OpenStack does. But the three main ones are software as a service, like, I don't know, Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, and all the rest. Uh, platform as a service. Can anybody name a platform as a service provider? Sorry? Heroku, Heroku exactly. Yep. Yep. There's one from Red Hat. Red Hat, do you know it? OpenShift, yeah. Thanks, Gabi. Yep. And the infrastructure as a service uh, layer. Open Nebula, as well as the other cloud controllers out there, are uh, working on the infrastructure as a service layer, on top of which you can orchestrate your services. And the deployment models. The deployment models are like four of them. The private cloud, which we are going to build today. The community cloud, which a community, like for example, I don't know, let's say Chata, has a, do you know the foundation Chata from Bucharest? Yep, okay. So they have like their cloud and their community. So they like put resources together like. They don't, can't, oh, I have to talk. Okay, closer. And the public cloud. Can somebody tell me a public cloud? Name one. Yeah, Amazon, exactly. Another one? Rackspace, yeah, OpenStack rules. And uh, hybrid cloud. A combination between a public and a private one. Okay, so the 
time is my time is limited though I hope not the time is limited so we'll get to work now and um, uh, some of the challenges open nebula as well as other cl cloud controllers uh, address are answers to this question uh, how do I provision a new virtual machine where do I store the disks uh, how do I set up networking for a multi-tier service uh, where do I put my web server VM uh, how do I manage the hypervisor? How do I get the monitoring information from the hypervisor? And um, how do you manage the distributed infrastructure and provide a set of APIs to users so they can use it, to developers so they can easily use it without any problems? Okay, uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the project, about Open Nebula. Open Nebula started back in 2005 as a research project and it grew until then and now they are at 4.2 um, 4.2 version they've gone a long way and uh, they uh, have developed a mature solution for cloud computing the community I can tell you that they have awesome documentation like you go on the documentation and you can bootstrap your cloud in one day and really understand what the hell they are talking about there uh, they are friendly I'm lurking on their mailing list to learn new stuff and to help if I can and always doesn't take like much for people to answer and be helpful and they also have um, a way of um, gather community like for translations and uh, they've recently started the feature funding uh, stuff that you can pay for a feature that you want uh, that you absolutely want and you can like let the feature open source afterwards so others can use it I think this is great stuff okay so our dojo cloud is made up of three machines I will go as simple as possible to not complicate the matters just to make a proof of concept cloud on open nebula using CentOS two machines with four gigabytes of RAM two CPU cores which I use for the virtualization the compute nodes and the front end Open Nebula has a really, really simple architecture. It has a no the front end, which controls the nodes. Uh, the front end uh, tells the nodes uh, where to, uh, sorry. The front end <laughs> decides where to spawn new VMs on the nodes based on their load. It also gathers information about uh, the status of the node using some drivers. Drivers are a specialized program that do certain stuff. And I'm gonna use one machine as a network file system server on which we are gonna store the virtual machine data. Basically the front end, the front end will also be a node and we'll have two nodes. Logically a front end that controls itself and another node and a network file server that stores our virtual machine data. The network file server I forgot to mention here, it has an solid state drive hard disk and this cloud is built on top of a uh, nope on nebula cloud I have used nested KVM do you know about nested KVM anybody yeah nested KVM is a cool feature that you can pass the virtualization extensions from the CPU to the virtual machine and the virtual machine basically thinks itself as a host and on that host you can like virtualize another host <laughs> so it's like three layers of virtualization it's a really cool feature for development uh, <coughs> okay the domain name I've chosen for for this small project is dojo database pro and this is a cloud network topology uh, I have on the cloud uh, bridge OVS VR 11 which is an open v switch bridge and the VLAN 11 layer 3 interface and the network 117.2.16.5.0 slash 24 I have a resolver 10.10.10.10 for our people to remind for our users to remind it <laughs> because it's really simple and the three machines front end with IP 50 node 1 with IP 51 and storage with IP 52 they are all connected in the same network now the first thing that uh, I have to do to configure is to create a virtual bridge on the hosts, on the front end and on the node. So 
virtual machines that are going that are going to run on that host can connect to the to the actual to the actual network. Uh, I have here the machines. Are you guys see? Do you guys see anything or barely? Okay, barely. Um, let's try. That would be cool. <laughs> Where can we do that? If somebody can help us, that would be nice. Is it is it better now? Sorry. Oh, you can't see now. Yeah, it's okay. Doesn't matter. Can you guys see the CLI? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Can you answer me, please? Can you see the CLI? Okay, so uh, the machines are vanilla CentOS 6.4. I've just in installed Vim because like, it takes forever to install Vim on my infrastructure. I don't know what happens to the updates uh, repo. And that's it, it just has Vim installed and the networking and the host name is set up. I would ask, like, Costi, can you like come and help me, please? Because if I'm gonna do that there, I cannot talk, and the guys cannot help me. Thanks. So the first, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I have a small to do here. Sorry, I'm just turning off the synchronization. I'm gonna open the bootstrap. The first thing I have to do is set up the network topology. The network topology is really simple, but before that, I'm just going to copy on the front end, on the node, and on storage uh, the CentOS Dojo directory, which, uh, which I've prepared for today. The because to make things simple, we can do this by hand, but it will take less, uh, much more than 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, Just have to give it, okay. Yeah, cool, right? <laughs> Problems are starting now. Doesn't matter. I know what, happe what happens. Uh, CentOS doesn't have uh, the OpenSSH clients installed by default, so now we are gonna install it. I'm using a really cool feature from Temux, which Open SSH clients, not utils, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now I'm do I'm gonna copy the stuff again. Oh. Yeah. Uh thanks. Ghost it's okay. I just gonna like change it and, and talk and stuff <laughs> no I, I like I don't somebody to hold the mic for me I'm not like a VIP or something you know okay uh, bootstrap the network topology on front on the front end and on the node I have to set up the bridge so and insert the um, Ethernet zero interface, so the virtual machines can connect to the bridge and connect to the internet. This is really simple to set up in, cent in CentOS because everything is it in its sysconfig. I really like that about CentOS. Okay.
is going to do, do the same on the node. Yeah, you can, you can like stop me and ask me whatever you guys want, and girls. Yeah, thanks, Adi. It's better this way. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, now, the network is configured just to restart it. Uh, network restart really works in CentOS compared to Debian when sometimes cracks. Just. Well, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because I forgot to install bridge utils. That doesn't matter. So the Ethernet zero interface is screwed. Doesn't matter. We'll configure it again. Looks like the node worked. Just have to <coughs> configure. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, this is more like it. I feel professional now. Okay. So we're back. Okay. This is the first thing that we have uh, done the network topology. The next is to set up the firewall so to permit uh, traffic to our virtual machines to be. And uh, I have uh, set up the firewall. I'm just gonna show you. It's a simple firewall that. No, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> because one of the strengths of CentOS is it's secure by default. You just have access to SSH and the uh, security extension Linux is enabled, the C Linux uh, framework. So you got security and I really want to build on top of that, not to throw away security and just for the purpose of the presentation. Okay. The firewall is really s <coughs> the firewall is really simple. I'm just accepting traffic on the virtual BR0 interface. 
from my own network uh, to name servers and related and established traffic to come back and the forwarding traffic to be enabled on the virtual bridge so machines can communicate between them. And I can like ping the machines from inside the network. Okay. Let's check to see if it worked. Yep, looks like it did. See the first rule with the domain. I'm just gonna do that on the second node as well. And check to see if it works. Yep. It did. Okay. The next, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a user with group ID and user ID nine eight six nine. I'm gonna do this because the network file server. I'm. I'm gonna uh, change ownership of the exports. I'm exported, exporting on the compute nodes to one admin because it's simple this way and it's much more secure because only one admin is gonna use those files and we don't need root access, so we just, it's better from a security standpoint. Okay, now I'm gonna do a small trick because honestly, okay. Group add 9869, what I mean. Okay, user add, just remember, minus D. varlib1 is the preferred place for the one admin home directory. The packages install it, the Open Nebula packages create this directory, so I'm just gonna use that standard, so to not mix up stuff on the system. Sorry? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so this step is over. So now, now I'm gonna configure the storage server. The really basic process, just you install nfs.utils minus yes, so it doesn't ask me again if I want or not. N and now we can chat, because until this finishes. Do you have like questions so far? Or hints, how can I improve this? The front end has a daemon that gathers information from the host, monitoring information, and uh, talks to libvirt, and tells libvirt to spawn a virtual machine on that node based on the scheduler. If the front end fails, the virtual machines are gonna function because they are inside libvirt and KVM but no, you'll have to either apply high availability from start or install a new new server. What's cool about, about it after, if you install, for example, a new front end, 
the front end and you re-add the host, the front end scans the host and imports all the virtual machines. So you'll have the same picture after you, um, you reinstall the front end. Okay, it's over. I just have to. The second hard drive here is on a solid state drive, so that's why I'm formatted. And I'm gonna mount it in exports. It's a 20 gigabyte QCOW2 image. Okay, let's go inside exports and make directory called data stores. Data stores in Open Nebula are places where you save virtual machines, like images for virtual machines. And there's a special place, there's a special data store called the System Data Store, where they store the uh, images of the running virtual machines. And you can have other data stores where you just store like QCOW2 images or ESO images or whatever. I'm gonna change ownership to one admin. Okay, and configure the export file and something else. What I'm basically saying here, that the export file is exported for the network that we are using, read write, so we can write there and read from there. Uh, synchronization, the write the application should wait for the NFS process to finish the write on the disk before going further. If we put a sync, we get a little bit of performance, but we can lose data if we have a power failure, so it's better to use sync. And two other parameters that uh, improve performance. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is configure the ports because the system is firewalled and when NFS starts, it brings a bunch of other demons in the play that uh, take a port, a random port from the high range ports and starts listening on that port. I want to know on which port they listen so I can pass rules on in the firewall. In ethical sysconfig NFS, you just uncomment the ports. Okay. and restart the services. RPC bind, start, NFS, start. Okay. Uh, everything is started. Exports for this network, as we can see. Now we just have to set up the firewall to allow the other machines to connect. Basically I just took the ports that I've set up earlier and put it here in this file and feed it to IP table so I don't have to do this like 11 times. <laughs> so it okay, exports, changed ownership and everything. 
So now is the step to install the Open Nebula frontend. For that, we have to activate IPL, the mm, repo from Fedora, which is really simple done using bget in the proper format. Install it. I'll have to do the same thing on the node. And the storage is basically over, we can close it. Okay. And to activate the Open Nebula repo. Funny thing, when I first started to talk to Adi about coming here, I thought that, okay, I have 45 minutes, I can install Open Nebula from source because it's really simple. Even the build step, they use, they have all the scripts in place. You just have to like hit the command and everything runs. And a week and a half ago, the guys from Open Nebula announced that they've made their own repos for CentOS and Debian, Ubuntu, and another one, Arch Linux, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So this is a great news. I just activate the repo and hit a yum install, and that's it, good to go with the last, latest version. Uh, I think I have it here. Yep, Open Nebula, CentOS repo. Just put the repo in its place. Okay. Do the same here. Okay. I'm gonna search for Open Nebula now, see if it's activated. We have uh, a lot of packages here, which we are gonna use just a few of them. The thing I like the most about Open Nebula and CentOS is that they provide this package, Node KVM, which you install and configures your node um, for KVM. And ready to insert in Open Nebula to use it as resources. On the front end, we are going to install Open Nebula servers. Why it's plural? Because there are two daemons, the one Open Nebula daemon and the scheduler daemon. The scheduler schedules the virtual machines based on parameters that you configure it with, and uh, the one daemon takes care of the rest, like orchestrating the disk and the network and all that, using drivers. Okay. Nebula server, not servers, and open nebula dot node dot kvm. On the second, we're going to install. Just open Nebula node KVM because it's just a compute node. No need for the front end or the servers. Now, it takes a little bit of time because there are quite a lot of packages to install. Do you have questions so far? Was it that scary until now, the command line? Until now, no. W we have two drives on a development server, two SSD drives, which we use as data stores in Open Nebula, and, and we have like started 
a couple of hundred virtual machines until now on top of them, and we've never experienced any kind of locks. It, they've just worked. They are always, yeah, we have a database, and on that server, uh, we do the import stuff. In, and that database is really EO intensive, so I am amazed how good the SSD are so far. Somebody said that he's going to install OpenStack or he's working on installing OpenStack from the audience. Yet I'm sure I've heard somebody's working on installing OpenStack in the future. Yeah, you? And may I ask you, okay, may I ask you why have you chosen OpenStack? Okay. and are going to scale like crazy, hundreds of nodes or just dev project? Oh, 10, oh, that's great. Yeah, cool. Is anybody using cloud computing solutions, private cloud in their company or the companies they work for? In-house made on top of Libvirt with KVM or Xen or? Oh, okay. okay. And you in the back, what kind of Oh, great. Okay. Okay, uh, about Hyper-V, unfortunately, and this is a minus for Open Nebula, they don't have drivers. So I guess you'll go OpenStack and talk to Alessandro, which is the master of Hyper-V. I'm just curious what kind of config management tools are you using, if any? Config, configuration management. Puppet, okay. Why Puppet? Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, definitely try SolStack. <laughs> yep. S I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Thanks, Gabi. Okay. Yeah, now I. I'm using subversion. Subversion. Yes. Okay. For uh, configuring servers. It's very simple and powerful. How do you configure servers with subversion? Like, mm, yes. correct me it's if I'm wrong, subversion is like Git, right? Yes, exactly. The versioning system? So the idea is to keep all the configurations from all the servers in one place. Okay. Uh, you just make some uh, simple hookups to, to the machine. When okay. And when you are uh, committing the new change, uh, the server, will do again a commit and uh, apply, apply the, the config and eventually restart the server. Uh, the, uh, 
the main thing is that uh, at any time you can come back to to the complete infrastructure at it was let's say two months ago okay so all the servers just have to revert to a specific version then restart the services and that's it it's very simple and powerful yeah sounds like an orchestrated ethical keeper you know about ethical keeper uh, no <laughs> yeah the thing that's built with git so just install it and it versions your ethical directory uh -huh. like how do you pronounce ethical directory in english etc etc the thing where you keep the configurations etc okay so not at the uh, as in Romanian <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a little bit more time and we are good to go tried to use subversion in the past but it took me like five days to install it and barely configure it and I said okay no thank you and we went git so it was a pretty good thing to do for us then no this is running on our development cloud which we have in the office and I'm Yep, I saw that. <laughs> okay. But it's at 99. Yeah, we can try here. Let's see. Okay, cool. Okay. How many of you are using Nginx and how many of you are using Apache? <laughs> Both? Is anybody using Varnish? Really? Four? Yeah, for <laughs> yeah, I meant for what applications? Sorry, like WordPress or web hosting? Okay. Okay, cool. I have to talk to you <laughs> about something varnish. I've talked with some of you in the break about performance of nested KVM. Like, this is it, the performance. And currently, the server does database import. Of, I don't know, two or three mach virtual machines that are like screwing the disk up. that I'm gonna do now just to have more time is to copy the QCow2 virtual machine image for CentOS to the front end so we can insert it in uh, the Open Nebula infrastructure.
Okay, the node is ready so we can configure it further. Now I'm just gonna mount the data stores I've created earlier on the net on the network file system server on the node. In the one directory, as you can see, it is empty. Um, the data stores inside Open Nebula are numbers, so it can index it really easy. Zero is the system data store, and 100 is the data store that I'm gonna create inside Open Nebula for storing shared uh, virtual machine images that you can instantiate on the private cloud that we are building. mounted. Second one, as you can see, the rights for the user, because it's the same user on the server and uh, on the client it directly made it so pretty simple. Three more packages to go. Ta da! Complete. Now we just have to mount the data stores in this host, too. Okay, they are here, cool. And I've noticed a problem with the packages. Uh, if I try, as you can see, the user one admin at install time, uh, it made itself a pair of keys, DSA keys, and set up the authorized keys and if we look at the dsa.pub key and the authorized key, we can look and look and look and look. They are the same. And if I try uh, to SSH to localhost using the user, I will get permission denied. I have the keys. It doesn't work. I don't know any kind of password for this user. It doesn't work because the cell Linux labeling for SSH, it's it's wrong. The .ssh directory should have okay. Restorecon .ssh. It would it won't work. Also, it has to have SSH home t uh, context. So I just change con. I've tried restore con back home. Okay, let's try and see. Okay. <coughs> now to write the command again. SSH home dot underscore T. And now I'm connected via SSH. Uh, another thing that Open Nebula needs is the one admin user public key on all the compute nodes. 
because the communication with the nodes from OpenNebula's perspective is done via secure shell. So it connects via SSH and runs some, uh, some script. The node doesn't have the... Uh, the SSH directory in place, okay. SSH. And copy the key. Inside authorized keys. Okay. Again, to fix the context. Okay, and to test from front, front end to see if I can connect to the node. As you can see, I'm on the node, it works. Now we just have to start the services on both the node. Oh, I should have done that as root. message bus is needed for communication and the open nebula service okay service libvirt start message bus start okay we've got a couple of one commands that we can use and start expect inspecting the system. Let's see if we have any host inside our cloud. Sorry, with list. As you can see, there is no host yet. No virtual network. The data store 100 that I've um, mounted earlier is not present yet. We need to create it and I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to create a data store. This is the file that defines the data store, the name of the data store, which is gonna be shared just to keep consistency. The uh, data store driver manager, its file system, and uh, transfer manager driver. These drivers are uh, doing management operations on the data store, the data store driver, the DSMED, and the transfer manager driver. Uh, it's transferring virtual machine images from one host to another in case of need. For example, when doing a live migration, you have to uh, relink the virtual machines on another host to work. Now as you can see I have created the 100 that shared uh, data store on which we are going to store QCOW2 images. The transfer manager, when using QCOW2 images, just clones the QCOW2 image so you have minimum space uh, usage. Okay, as you can see, the size of the 100, the shared data store is 19.7 because that's the amount of space that we have on the n network file system server. Okay. I have created a data store, I have configured. Now let's add the hosts. One host, create the name of the host, the name of the information driver. The information driver collects uh, monitoring information from the hosts and we use KVM. The virtualization driver 
talks to Livvirt and passes Livvirt uh, in XML to spawn a virtual machine, also KVM, and the network driver, which we don't use any kind of network driver, we let Livvirt to connect the virtual network interface to the bridge. This is the most basic case. Open Nebula has drivers also for Open vSwitch. For Open vSwitch, you get the plus because when you instantiate the machine, uh, the Open Nebula also sets up uh, some open flow rules. Do you know Open vSwitch? Everybody? Just heard of it. Do you know what it is? It's a multi layer switch. Does multi layer switch tell you something? You can do switching and IP routing with it. And do you know OpenFlow? Have you ever heard of OpenFlow? The protocol that is changing the way we do networking inside of clouds. Okay, let's see if our host, we have, a, we have an error. Yeah, okay, let's do some debugging. So, error monitoring host front end. Let's dig through the logs. Okay. <coughs> host key verification failed. Yep. Just deleting the host and SSH front end because I didn't have front end inside my known host, it broke. Now it should work. That's an interesting uh, command. The top, just like top, you can use it to see the status is on. As you can see, it has two virtual CPUs and 3.7, four gigabytes of RAM that I've allocated to this virtual machine. That's a host in our virtual cloud. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really like funny. Okay, now let's head the second host, the node. Should work. Yep, it works. As you can see, they are both like the same. They have the same amount of resources. Okay, now we have to create the virtual network. We don't have any kind of virtual network defined. I'm gonna show you the way you define a virtual network and what does it mean. The name of the network, the type, the type can be fixed. So you define by hand I, the IPs the machine, the virtual machines get or ranged in which uh, the virtual machines get the next available IP address. The network address, the network size, the network mask, which IP to start to allocate to virtual machines inside itself, which IP to end, and the bridge on which uh, the virtual machine should connect and this is wrong, but I'm gonna fix it now. The bridge, it should be ver, ver BR0, not just BR0. As you can see here, the name of the virtual bridge we create we have created earlier. Okay, just create the virtual network. As you can see, a virtual network appeared of type ranged on the bridge VR BR0. The name is private. So we've got the data store. This this is the part of provisioning the cloud with data store, with images, with templates that user are gonna use to instantiate virtual machines and do their job. Okay, uh, one step, I forgot, I 
I have to do next is uh, to enable the virtual infrastructure KVM and leave it to use network file system. You, by default, it is off. So if I try to instantiate a virtual machine, it will give me permission denied because uh, the QM layer cannot access uh, files that are located on an NFA, on a network file system server. So let's enable it. Yeah, on. Okay. Yeah, uh, of course, but I don't want to preserve it. But yeah, we can do it to preserve it. Let's suppose this is a real cloud, not a virtual one. You, I have to put it off and Ah, okay, and it takes time. Yep. <coughs> Already started the services. Yep. The virtual machine is ready. Waiting for us to insert it in, in the cloud. Okay. As you can see, we have no image yet. I'm just going to create an image. One image create in Data Store 100, named CentOS 6.4x8664. Type operating system, driver. QCOW2, <coughs> path to the image, CentOS, okay. Now the image is, is in status locked because we're open nebula, now it's um, copying the image to the data store. As you can see here, here is the image on the network file system server. Yeah, the image is named using a shasam, so they, the names don't collide. And uh, shasam to name uh, translation is kept in the database. Yeah, Any, anything you do, I hope, I hope and I know you know it, just back up your database <laughs> as often as possible. And the final thing that we have to define to for the provisioning to be ready, we have to define a template. A template being the um, definition of a virtual machine. And that definition tells which virtual machine image to use, which network to connect to, and it has a bunch of context variables which are available in uh, the virtual machine those context variables can be used by several scripts, the Open Nebula contextualization mechanism inside the virtual machine to like configure the network interface, the uh, DNS servers, and uh, anything else you can think of. They even give us a way uh, in the docs where you can build your own contextualization RPMs that you can install on the base image and you can do whatever you want using the contextualization mechanism. It is run after the system is boot up. It takes a little bit of time to copy it. It has 2.2 gigabytes. Yep, now it's ready. 
a Windows machine. Just you install the Windows XP or Win 7 or whatever, and you just boot, boot it afterwards. The minus being that you don't have the contextualization mechanism on top of Windows. Okay, the image is ready. Now you just have to define to create the template. But first, let me show you what the template looks like. How does the template look like? Hello world. The name of the template, the context, the context being uh, the variables that are made available to the virtual machine scripts inside the virtual machines to contextualize it. The CPU, the number of CPUs from the host that you want to assign to the virtual machine. The first disk, the image that is going that you are gonna going to use. The image, as you can see, I've used the image that we've created earlier, the CentOS 6.4x86-64 graphics to listen for VNC connections. The memory, which are we going to allocate to this virtual machine, which is 1024 megabytes. The net, the first network interface card connected to the network private, which we have defined earlier, the architecture of the operating system, and the number of virtual CPUs that are going to be present in the virtual machine. As we, as we did before, we just create it with one template, create, CentOS, Dojo, Open Nebula, templates, hello world. And now we have it, the template, it's here. If you want, uh, well, it's not similar to Livvirt because that's not XML, and in Livvirt you have to define in XML. And what does what does Open Nebula do? It orchestrates the creation of the network, of the storage, and the the place where it talks to Livvirt and creates by default the XML. So it passes the XML to Livvirt and Livvirt does his job using that XML, you know? Yeah, editor, thanks. Okay. As we saw it earlier, we have it we have it here okay let's instantiate the template zero and give it a name of hello world and now we have a pending virtual machine to be booted up on node zero one as you can see here it is running. We can use show zero. If we use show, we can see the, the image, the network, the IP address it received from the network, and its template that we should we saw it earlier okay let's see if it works yeah Okay, new connection. On zero. Connection refused. Okay. Just gonna stop the IP tables for a second. So we see what happens. The machine is booting up, as you can see. Yep, turn. 
Yeah. No, no, no. From the host, it uses one CPU. 100% of the CPU that you have on the host. But it presents to the virtual machine two virtual CPUs. The virtual machi machine thinks of it as a dual core. That's the main, you know, that's what those things do. Another machine? Yeah, no. The, I think that's like parallel computing or something that you can do that, but no. Not this. Yep. And the firewall is off. Uh, One hundred ten to eight. This is the virtual machine. Yeah, this is its IP address which the IP address, everything connected to networking is one VNet. One VNet, if we inspect the virtual network private, we can see that it has ID zero, its name is private, its type is ranged, the bridge using VRBR zero, no VLAN on this, uh, on this network, the DNS server, the gateway, the network address, the network mask that this virtual network has. I don't know why this is, doesn't work. Interface is Nick VNet zero. Okay. Mm, yep. I was minus minus all just to disable this virch net auto start minus minus disable default and not destroy default. Network default destroyed, okay. S restart delivered the process. See if it created the VRV, it didn't create it, okay. Restart the network. Okay, now, now the VR VR zero has the correct interface. We just okay. Add if, thanks. Add if bridge, right? Yeah. Uh, v net zero. Okay. Now it works. Google. Why Google when we are sent OS? Yeah. This is it. <laughs> now we have a cloud. And we can boot up virtual machines on top of it. <laughs>
Yes. Okay. My personal conclusions about CentOS is that, and the things I love the most of it is that it's secure by default. It's really, really easy to use. You have seen just you install and you are good to go. And they have a great community and a great KB inside their community. And uh, about Open Nebula, the documentation kicks ass. It's really easy to skim through it and to build the cloud if you read it. And as I've said before, I like the sysadmin-centric approach and it's mature, mature software and a lot of big names are using it. I'm not gonna do influence traffic now and tell you which guys are using this tool, but you can research it for yourself if you want. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do with Open Nebula, I'll hope I'm gonna have a talk in uh, Open Nebula Conf, which is um, an event they are gonna organize this year in Berlin, and I'm gonna talk about Open Nebula and Salstack if you want to join us. Uh, Salstack is a great tool used in configuration management for configuration management purposes and the uh, remote execution environments. What I've done here, I'm gonna do there with one command everything and the servers will be configured in the proper order and at the end I have the same result this is what I'm gonna I'm working on right now I thought I could finish a beta until this dojo but I couldn't so in 24 September I will for sure <laughs> thanks